girls. You are cute, cute, cute tonight. You know that, right? You know you can't come to sisterhood looking anything less than cute. So I'm just going to apologize now. You are going to be staring at me all night long. And I should have worn something a lot less distractive. But I can't ever, ever preach on this on a Sunday. There's no way Kyle would let me up here. So just, just like, let me just show you what it does now. All right, you got it out of your system? Are we good? Okay, focus in now. Focus in. Hey, before I jump into the message tonight, I do want to, I could not be more proud of the girls. So just to give you a little, a little background story on this devotion that we're releasing tonight, hot off the press, that a lot of the girls that were a part of this, we call it the Sisterhood Collaborative. It's our second devotional that we've wrote. And the reason we write them is to raise money in order to do the things God's called us to do beyond our walls. Every time we've written a devotional, every single cent that's made off of it, as you girls purchase them, we make sure it goes back into, as seed, goes back into an organization or a location or a region that God is wanting to do something special in. And so I'm so proud of the girls. All the girls that wrote in this devotion actually have been on the missions trip with us to Belize. And after that experience, they came back and they were able to write these devotions. And so can you say thank you to them? one? More? I'm so proud of them. Say thank you one more time to them. And so just before I jump in the message, I'm, I feel like it's important you hear my heart on this. Of, um, we did Sisterhood tonight, Sisterhood Rally we call it, for you, with you in mind, de most definitely. But we did it also for a cause beyond our walls. And so my heart tonight is that you all will do your best to link arms with us to make Sisterhood Belize happen. It's an honest dream that God has placed in my heart, but not just my heart. He's placed it in the girls' hearts in Belize, and he's placed it in the hearts of many of the girls, and probably by the end of the night, your heart too, is my hope um, that that will happen for you as well. But this dream that we have to go to Belize, we've seen this opportunity to go and reach the women there, many of them single moms, many, many, many of them, very young mothers. And so we just see that God has something special for these women in Belize, and God is giving us that territory. And so we're just being obedient to that. But I want you to know, she, when Valentine, that was Valentine, her husband, and Derek and her oversee all of our care points and the children we sponsor as a church there in Belize, they oversee that area, and there's a call on their lives as well that God has. And so when she says by faith, she means by faith, we're saying we're going to do Sisterhood Belize. Because here's what I need you to know. I have zero dollars to do it with. And you can't do Sisterhood for free. I know you think this is for free. This ain't for free. Somebody paid for you to sit in these seats. Somebody paid to make sure that you came and had an encounter with God. Somebody paid to make sure you get the word of God. The only reason I'm speaking right now is because I am for free. <laughs> Nobody be paying for me tonight. And I would like to talk, I demand to speak to somebody about that. Tomorrow, I will talk to them. That is not my timer. I'm going to keep preaching. That timer just went off. So, hey, listen, it, nothing is ever for free, right? Right? There's some sacrifice that we make to invest in ourselves and to hear from God. And so normally what we do is sisterhood conference in the fall right here in Defiance. And we love this, this conference God has given us. And that conference is normally a registration conference. Again, just to remind us, I just feel the spirit of the Lord on this to remind us, nothing is ever for free. And can I encourage you, it's good to invest in yourself. I, the reason I stand on this platform tonight is because I have spent thousands of dollars investing in my own spiritual growth. I have flown around the world when I felt like God told me to be somewhere at a conference, and I paid to be there, and I invested in myself. I've bought books. I've bought podcasts. I've bought videos. I've bought, you know, the, the VCR tapes when it was VCR. That's how long I've been spending money to invest in my own spiritual growth. So never feel bad and don't ever complain when you're investing in your own spiritual growth. Now, because we're going into a building in the fall, we just don't want it to be overwhelming to all of our teams. So it's likely that we won't be doing a conference in the fall so that we can get moved into the new building. Can we just thank God for the building we are so excited about? 
And since we're not, I think it's an amazing opportunity for us to still do sisterhood, still in the fall, but we're just going to go to Belize to do it. And so there's going to be multiple ways you can make that happen. You can resource it. You can pray for it. You can go and be a part of it. So if you want to be a part of that mission trip, those spots will fill up quick. And so stop out in the lobby and let them know that and you can get more information about it. Buy everything you can out there. I say you should buy 10 copies of this, maybe five minimum, and do a small group this summer. Somebody was wondering, what should I do for a small group, how about we do about 20 women's Dream Again small groups, and we pray for Belize Sisterhood, and we pray over this Dream Again devotion. Buy those, use them for your small groups, and then make sure you buy these bracelets. Do all of the shopping you need, and you're also going to have an opportunity to give at the end of this message tonight. But I need you to hear my heart about this, because we are obeying God with this, okay? We're going to be obedient, and God is going to do something amazing that's going to blow all of our minds, not just here in defiance, but literally taking sisterhood global across the world. Amen? Yes. All right, the title of my message tonight is this, Dreams and Doorways. Dreams and Doorways. Here's what I need you to understand and what I need to understand about dreams. In between me and my dream is a series of doorways. And what you do with your doorways will determine what God can do with your dreams. What you choose to do with the doorways God places in front of you, because every single time, mark it down, between you and your dream, there is a series of doorways that you have to walk through. And what you do with those doorways will determine what God can do with that dream he's given you. And so tonight, it's just my hope that we would bring some enlightenment to the doorways that are going to stand before us because God doesn't want us to be surprised by them. I think so often why we haven't realized our dreams, why we haven't reached our dreams, why we haven't seen more dreams come to pass is simply because we weren't looking for the doorways. We were so focused on the dream, we missed the doorways. In fact, let me just tell you this little story. I'm going to confess something, but you can never tell anybody else about it. You promise? It's between me and you, okay? So in my house, we have this middle room. And there's windows all around this middle room. I won't try to explain why, but there's glass everywhere in this middle room. And there's also two sliding doors. And they're completely clear, completely glass. Well, we always, why are you laughing? You already know what I'm going to say. We always leave these doors open. They're always open. Never, ever, ever, ever do we close these doors. Well, one night I was in the kitchen and I was thinking about, I was probably honestly mad at a child and stomping across the house. And so I am worked up about something and I don't remember what, but I just remember taking off across the house to cut across the house. You go through these glass doorways. There's two sets of them to get to the other side of the house. It's the shortcut. And so I wasn't paying much of attention and I took off across that kitchen and I am telling you, I smacked so hard into a glass door. I want you to hear it in your mind right now. I'm talking face plant in the middle of my house right into that door. Now, how many of you know the last person you want to know that you did that is my husband, Kyle? Please, Lord. I don't care if I'm bloody and broken right now. Just tell me he did not see that just happen. Now, don't make fun of me. I know some of you have busted right on through your screen doors before. Don't act like you haven't. I face planted that glass door, and I was so hoping nobody saw it. But then I could hear everybody laughing because there was, you didn't have to see it to know what happened. All you had to do was hear a very large human body just went right into a glass window. That's what you could hear. I face planted that. Why? Well, I wasn't expecting it to be there. I wasn't expecting a doorway there. I was expecting an opening. I was just expecting to go. Here's the thing. This is what happens with our dreams. You get all giddy and all excited about the dream. And you should. And you go marching off, taking off towards it. And you smack right into a doorway. Right into a door. Why? You weren't expecting it to be there. You weren't looking for it. Or you didn't know what to do with it. Or it became a barrier that just kind of concerned you and scared you, so you turned away and walked off. We do this all the time with our dreams. 
So here's my heart tonight. I'm not even going to preach that long. I won't have to, hopefully. I'm just asking God, show us what are the most common doorways so that we can be expecting them, so we don't face plant into them, so we don't miss them, or so we don't get worried thinking they're locked and closed and just turn and walk off, never making it on the other side to where our dream is. So I'm asking God, what are the most common? And so I want to give you just five doorways that I can guarantee you will be in between you and your dream every time. And this way you're going to know. You're going to be looking for them. You're going to know what to do with them. And you're going to be expecting them to be there. And I want to show you these doorways through the life of Paul. Paul knew what it was like to have a dream and then have a series of doorways he was going to have to walk through to get to that dream. In fact, let me tell you this about Paul. Paul also knew what it was like to have an ungodly dream be replaced by a godly dream. Can I just say some of you need that to happen tonight. You have a dream, but it's a you dream. It's not a God dream. And when it's a God dream, it has a whole lot less to do with you and a whole lot more to do with how God wants to use you to impact others. Well, Paul was walking around killing Christians. That was his dream. He had made it his call, his vision, his dream to kill Christians that believed in Jesus. Well, eventually God shows up and he says, I don't like that dream, Paul. I'm going to take that dream for you and I'm going to give you a God dream. And so God replaces that dream in Paul's life and he tells Paul, I want you to go around the entire globe and preach the gospel. And that became Paul's dream, to take the gospel around the entire world. That he knew nothing more, nothing less than the call on his life was to share the story of Jesus Christ with the world around him. And so that's Paul's dream. And, when we, and I want you to see it in Acts chapter 20, verse 22 through 24, because we're going to see some doorways he had to walk through. It says this, And now, compelled by the Spirit... I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. The task, the dream of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Let me show you the first doorway that Paul had to walk through. And it was this, doors of prompting. Doors of prompting. Look what it says in verse 22. It says this, and now compelled by the Spirit. Listen, that word compelled means bound by. I am so overwhelmed with this thing I need to do. God, it, it means the word prompting in other versions. That's what the word is, compelled or prompted. I'm prompted by the Holy Spirit to do this. I wonder if you've ever been prompted. On the way to your dream, there's going to be doorways of prompting. God's going to tell you to do something, to change something, to say something, to give something away, to take something back. God's going to prompt you by the Holy Spirit. It's this urge in you. You just think to yourself, I think I should. I think God wants me to. I think I need to. And God begins to prompt us. God was prompting Paul. He said, compelled by the Spirit, I have to go to this place. I have to go to Jerusalem. I'm compelled. I can't not do it. And there's this prompting that happens in us. I want you to know, I really think sometimes the promptings are even more important than the dream. You see, the prompting doorways will keep you on track towards the dream. If you aren't experiencing promptings, it's so easy to get off track because you don't know where to go. God wants to prompt you in the right direction, to prompt you to be around the right people, to prompt you to make some right decisions. The Holy Spirit's job is to prompt us. Here's what you need to know about prompting. Prompting only comes in God's presence. So anytime you feel like, I've just not been prompted lately. I just have not really felt like God's told me to do anything. I wonder if you have been in his presence. Because every time you're in God's presence, he will prompt you to do something. He will stir you up to do something. Betsy, will you hand me that pop bottle? I thought of this today because I thought, God, how do, you, how do we show the girls what this looks like? Because I can remember a time where my promptings, I had some promptings, but I had to get used to walking through the doorway of prompting. And the more you walk through, you open it up and walk through a door of prompting, 
the more promptings God's willing to give you. You know why? He can trust you with them. And so if every time I get a prompting, I kind of stare at the door and I think, I don't know if that's God. How do I even know? I mean, I don't know what's going to happen if I really actually go over and ask that person to pray for them. I know I feel prompted to do it, but I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, what's really going to happen if I send that text message? Does it matter anyway if I encourage them? I feel prompted to do it, but I'm not sure. And you and I keep staring at a stinking door, never opening it up and actually walking on through. But the more we learn to open up the door and walk on through when we feel prompted to do something, the more God will trust you with those promptings. For example, if I were to open up this right now, it probably you'd hear a little fizz, right? That would be like some of you how you feel your prompting. I think, I think that's God. I think I feel like I should do that. I think I'm supposed to do that. I think I should go apologize to my husband right now. Psst, psst, right? Just a little psst. That's what it would do, right? This is what God, I feel like God wants to do in us. But the more obedient you become to those promptings, why? Because those promptings stand between you and your dream. If you think that you can just walk away from a door of prompting and it not affect the dream that's on the other side, we're wrong. But the more we're in God's presence, you know what he does? Why are you laughing? Come here, Des. <laughs> Who thinks I will? <laughs> yes. What? What would happen if I open this right now? Everywhere this bottle is going. The more you spend time in God's presence, this is what a prompting feels like. And this is what a prompting should feel like. This is what you want a prompting to feel like. I just want to be sure. Man, every time I turn around, God's prompting me to do something. Prompting me to say something. Prompting me to give something. Prompting me to help someone. Prompting me to pray for someone. Prompting me to read a scripture. Prompting me to go serving kids. Prompting me to be greeting at the door. Prompting me to be on the worship team. Prompting me, prompting me, prompting me, prompting me. The more you stay in his presence the more you're going to feel a different prompting. And the more you walk through a door of prompting, the more he's going to give you. And the stronger they become. Listen to what Job said. This is how Job described it. He said this, I am full of words, and the spirit within me compels me. Inside, I'm like bottled up wine, like new wineskins, ready to burst. That's what God wants to do in our heart, girls. Can you even imagine... Don't open it. I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Can you even imagine if all of us in this room just started walking through doors of prompting? Do you know how our city would change? Can you imagine how this church would change? Can you imagine how our workplaces would change? Can you imagine what would happen in our schools if we don't even focus on the big dream? Don't even look at it. Just look at the I just need to, I feel prompted, so I'm going to step on through. I just feel prompted. I just feel prompted. Doors of prompting will take you towards the dream that God's placed on your heart. And Paul knew that. He said, I'm compelled. I have to do this. Here's the second door that Paul ran into, and it was this, doors of opportunity. He said this in Acts 20, 22. He said, I'm compelled to go where? To Jerusalem. Why? Because there was an open door of opportunity to share the gospel in Jerusalem. That's why he knew this is an open door, so I'm going to go there. Well, how did he know it was an open door? Because he had also experienced closed doors of opportunity. Did you know there's both? Some of us just keep rushing through every door of opportunity, never stopping long enough to go, is this door open or is this door closed? Because not every opportunity is a God opportunity. And this is where it gets all confusing, right? Like how do I even know? I think we got to learn how to discern doors of opportunity. It's going to prevent some things, and it's also going to push some things forward. Here's how Paul knew that he had an open door of opportunity in Jerusalem. Because in Acts chapter 16, it says this, verses 6 through 10. It said, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region, I'm not going to say them, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching. 
Now, does that sound crazy to anybody else? The Holy Spirit kept him from preaching in that area. It was a closed door, still an opportunity, but the door was closed. And then it goes on to say, when they came to the border of Myasia, they tried to enter, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Guess what? Another closed door. Then it goes on, and it says, so they passed by, and they went down to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come on over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. An open door. Listen, doors of opportunity stand between you and your dream. You just have to learn how to discern them. I have to learn how to discern them. Not every door of opportunity is the right door to walk through. There's a lot of doors that are going to stand in front of you and your dream. And you have to slow down long enough when you feel prompted, walk through those doors of prompting. When you see an opportunity, what you should do is slow down long enough to ask the Holy Spirit, is this an open door or a closed door? You will never ask the Father in heaven and him not tell you or tell you the wrong one. Not ever. I pray it all the time. God, if this is a closed door, lock it so that I can't shove it open. Anybody else good at shoving doors open? Girl, I will break this thing off the hinges if I want through it and it's closed. And we do that so often. I want the dream so bad. I want that thing so bad. I so bad want to get there that I am going to shove this door open at all costs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait just a minute. Take a little moment and discern the doors. I promise you, God will show you. What if I can't discern it? Then I ask godly counsel. I'm just curious, when is the last time you invited godly counsel into your life? I promise Paul was talking to people. He was, he was working with other disciples to know, is this an open door? Is it a closed door? Does God want me to go through it? Does he not? Because we will make the wrong decision. If you're asking the wrong people about your marriage that is a mess, you might end up walking through the wrong door, seeing it as an opportunity, but it's a closed door, not an open door. We'll miss those doors if we don't discern and be able to stop long enough and just ask God, God, is this an open door or is this a closed door? Is this an opportunity for me? Do you want me to walk through it or should I wait for the next door? Just like Paul did. Nope, it's not this one. This door's closed. He asked the Lord. Nope, it's not this one. This door's closed. But let me tell you, once the door is open and God has confirmed that opportunity, that job opportunity, that opportunity to stay home because that's been your dream, that opportunity to go and use your gift in a new, unique way, that opportunity to start that business, that opportunity to do that thing you've always thought about doing, that opportunity to get free in your finances, that opportunity for your marriage to improve, whatever that door, once you know... Walk through it. Because what you do with the doorway will determine what God can do with your dreams and my dreams. Here's the next door that Paul walked through on the way to his dream. And it was this, doors of uncertainty. Doors of uncertainty. He said this in Acts 20, verse 22. I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. The scariest statement for some of you in this room. How many just do not like that stuff? I want to know what's going to happen to me there or I ain't going. Have you ever? It's almost like, it's almost like the door is cracked, you know, but you can't, um, you can't totally see what's behind it. This is what happens in doors of uncertainty. We're on our way to our dream. We've been prompted. We even have a door of opportunity open. And we step through only to be met by doors of uncertainty. And now I'm standing at a door of uncertainty. And there's no glass to see through. I have no idea what's on the other side. I promise this is where so many of us abandon the dream. Right here at this doorway. We get to the door of uncertainty, and because we want to know what's on the other side, and we want to know what's God going to do, and we want to know what comes next, and we want to know how's it going to happen, and we want to know how's it going to get paid for, and we want to know how's it going to work, how's that going to happen, what's going to happen. We want to know all these things that God's never going to show you. You're not ready for those details. I'm not ready for those details. We have this door of uncertainty. And instead of being brave enough to open it and walk through, so often we just turn and walk away. 
I thought about this um, not too long ago. Maybe you've experienced this. And so I'm just going to, let's just call her Marissa because that's her name. And so she was a, don't be scared, girl. She was babysitting for me. And I'll never forget, I thought of this today, thinking of doors of uncertainty. She was babysitting. And we were both at a meeting that we had to be at. And I had called to check in at home. And she gets on the phone and she is scared, terrified. You can tell. And as a mom, you're like, whoa, what is, what is happening? And so she's whispering. And she says, she says, I said, what's going on? She goes, I'm hiding in your bedroom. What do you mean you're hiding in my bedroom? What in the world is, what is, I go, why? What is happening? She goes, somebody was at the door. I go, well, who was it? She goes, I don't know. I couldn't see, so I didn't open it. I just came in. <laughs> well, then it dawns on me like, well, where are my children? <laughs> I've never got that piece of the story. But we can laugh at Marissa, but we do it all the time. I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't. I just want to peek. Like, just tell me, God, what's on the other side. I promise I'll go through. Will you? Would you? I mean, if you had a door of uncertainty that maybe the marriage isn't going to get better right away, it's going to get worse before it gets better, would you go through? I mean, if you don't know how the income is going to increase enough for you to stay home, though you know you need to stay home because your, your child needs you at home, I mean, would you? Would you? Would you? Doors of uncertainty. Listen, God wants to give you the courage to walk through some doors of uncertainty. They're always going to be there. You're never going to know the whole story. You're never going to know every detail. You're never going to have all the information. You're never going to know completely how. You're never going to know completely why. It's okay. Because the Lord himself is the doorkeeper. And he's standing on the other side of that door. And all he needs you to do is trust him enough that if you've been prompted... And the door of opportunity was there and you walked through that this door's safe too. Even if you don't know what's on the other side. This is where we get courage, girls. This is where we have to get brave. God, I feel like you've prompted me and I've stepped on through. I feel like you've given me a door of opportunity and I've stepped on through. And now, God, here I am at this door. I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if we're going to get over this. I don't know how to overcome it. But I know you're faithful and you're waiting for me on the other side. And I know my dream's on the other side. And I know if I don't walk through this door, I will never see that dream at all. So right now, I'm going to wet my pants as I open the door and see what you got on the other side. Now, don't get encouraged too soon, because I'll tell you what's on the other side. Because here's the truth. Doorways of uncertainty usually look more like hallways of uncertainty. You may get up on the other side, like, I did it, hey, and go, what the heck? This is like a hallway for miles. I still don't know. I still don't know how. I still don't know why. I still don't know what. Just keep walking. Just keep going. Just keep moving. Because under, at, even in the hole of that uncertainty, God will give you some more prompting doors. And he'll give you some more opportunity doors. He'll give you some more doors to keep going through. You just have to be brave enough to open the door and walk on through. Doors of uncertainty. They're always going to be in front of us, in between us and our dream. Don't let them stop you. Why are you quitting? Just because you don't know? Just because you didn't get all the answers? Did you get a prompting? Did you have a door of opportunity? You're good, girl. Just open it up and move on through. The Lord is your doorkeeper. He's on the other side. Here's the next door that he had to face. In between him and his dream, Paul faced doors of opposition. Doors of opposition. Acts chapter 20, verse 23. It says, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Paul didn't know anything. 
He still didn't get the answer even walking through the door of uncertainty. But he did know one thing. I'm going to face opposition there. God has already warned me, I'm going to face opposition. Let me tell you why this door is so important that you know it's there. Because otherwise, when you hit it and you face plant it, because you will. You know why? Because the enemy's on the other side and he's doing this. He's holding it shut. He doesn't want you. You think he wants you to walk through that doorway? No. You think he wants you to live out that dream? No. Do you think he wants you to work on that marriage and stick with it? No. Do you think he wants you to get out of debt? No. Do you think he wants you to be with your children and train them up in the ways of God? No. Do you think he wants you to start that business? No. Do you think he wants you to join the worship team? No. Do you think he wants you in here every Sunday and serving at the church and making a difference? No. Do you think he wants you going to Belize for Belize Sisterhood? No. He's on the other side holding the dang thing shut. And you think, and I think, that just because I have to work it a little bit harder, just because I have resistance, just because I'm an opposition, that somehow the dream is no longer and that it's locked. No. Doors of opposition will stand between you and your dream. Don't let it freak you out. In fact, let me say this. The more opposition, probably the closer you are to the opportunity in the dream. The stronger the resistance, the closer you're getting. As long as you know it's a God prompting, as long as you know it's a God door, a God opportunity, a God dream, it lines up with the word, it lines up with godly counsel, you know it makes you more like Jesus and it impacts everybody else. As long as you know that, that's all you need to know to know this is nothing more than a door of opposition. It's not locked, it's not, it's not shut. I just got an enemy on the other side opposing me from getting through. Let me tell you, even just for this conference, just for tonight, just for this rally, the opposition was almost laughable. And it is every sisterhood. But I'm just telling you today, as I was studying this message, God is going, to, he was saying to me, whispering to me, can you push it open? Are you going to keep going or are you going to quit now? Are you going to turn back now? What are you going to do now? The opposition is there. That's just a door of opposition. Don't be scared of it. Don't be thrown by it. Don't be swayed by it. Don't turn around and walk away. I just need you to push it open. Go ahead and push on through because you are stronger than the enemy on the other side. You hold the victory. He is a loser. He cannot hold the door shut. He can just trick you into thinking it's shut. He doesn't hold the key. Jesus holds the key. He was robbed of every key he ever had by Jesus. He can't lock doors on you. Only God can do that. And even for tonight, I'm just telling you, in fact, I'll just tell you this. It probably only means something to me, but it's worth sharing in case it means something to you. When I shared earlier a, during that, that prayer transition, when you came into the altars and you forgave some people you needed to forgive, I'm telling you, I saw it in, as I was praying and walking. I just saw it happen, but that wasn't planned. We weren't going to do anything in the altar. We weren't going to do any prayer transition there. We weren't going to do anything at all. But as I was walking, I felt a prompting, and I had a door of prompting. I thought, oh, I'm going through that. I can tell that's got to be the Holy Spirit. It lines up with your word, God. It'll make us look more like Jesus. It'll free us of our chains. Then it must be you, right? And so I knew. And then there was a door of opportunity, right? We have the moment. We have that time. So I just knew this is what we're going to do tonight. Let's, let's make sure the team knows this. And I texted the worship team. And I can tell you exactly what time. I'll tell you why I can tell you that in a minute. But I texted the worship team and I said, hey, I'm on a walk and God's given me just like a vision of what's going to happen tonight during that song. And I really feel like people are going to get free. I feel like some chains are going to fall around this area of unforgiveness. I feel like the Holy Spirit's coming for it. And people are going to be changed forever in that altar. So let's add this in. Let's make this happen. Let's pray over it. Let's do it. And, and the whole team texts back, yes, awesome. Cannot wait. That's, that's great. And so we, they send those texts back. And then what happens next will make you laugh. What was it? It was a door of opposition. Then there's a power surge in the whole building. Fried everything about 10 minutes after I had sent that text message. And we all had declared out loud, man, those women are getting free in that altar tonight. 10 minutes later, fried the keyboard, fried all the speakers, 
fried everything back in the sound. Like, if you only knew what the team has endured on your behalf today and the things that happened, and they were all keeping it from me. They didn't want me to know, which kind of makes me happy and ticked at the same time. And so, and so I didn't know this until right before I was coming here this evening. And Kyle walks in the room and he begins to tell me, I can see it on his face, I know, I know. Where is he? You can't keep nothing from me. I know that face. So you just don't ever lie to me because I'll know. The Holy Spirit will prompt me. And so here, so I can see on his face and I go, well, I already know there was some big crises today, right? Well, I didn't. I, didn't. I hadn't heard anything. Okay, right. So, so then he's like, well, how'd you know? And I go, well, somebody said that you had some emergencies around. And he's like, then he begins to spill the beans about everything that happened. And so I don't know why. I just was going to turn around and be like, okay, because I can't bring anything to it. But then God goes, it was a door of opposition. And I go, so it dawns on me. So I turn back to Kyle. I go, what time? What time did that happen? And he told me what time, and I went back to my phone, and I start tracking the time of the text messages that were coming through. And I knew, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew because we had seized a door of prompting, and we had seized a door of opportunity, and we were moving forward with something. You will never know what actually really happened in that altar. You won't because it's spiritual. You can't see it with your eyes. You can't see it with your eyes, but I promise you, heaven is shouting over what happened in that altar, and the devil himself wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing. So he, so what? It was a door of opposition. I'll tell you another door of opposition. We were going to give you cotton candy tonight. You ain't getting any. You should have seen those cotton candy sticks the guys were working on back there. They looked like soppy mops, right? It's not working. Why? It's just a door of opposition. But you know what? I have come tonight to punch the devil in the teeth. If he thinks one little tiny door of opposition is going to keep us from getting through, he's wrong. You can get through that door. Don't let that door stop you. opposition. Don't let it surprise you. We think we did something wrong when we make our way up to a door of opposition. Like even tonight I'm going, do we cancel? Not only that, then he had the goal to set off the devil. We're just going, we're just punching him tonight. He had the goal to set off a fake tornado siren. I said, oh, hell no. way too cute and shopped way too long for those girls not to show up. We would have just died together and met Jesus together. I think that's a cool way to go. <laughs> Shoot, I just realized we're live on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> well, if that offended you, Please log off now. It does not get better from here. <laughs> the opposition proves the opportunity. The opposition proves the opportunity. You're not being opposed because you're doing something wrong. You're being opposed because you're doing something right. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you. And the final door you're going to have to go through, in between you and your dream, there's some doorways. Don't smack your face into them. Go ahead and turn the handle and open it first. Here's the final door that, that Paul had to walk through, and it was this. Doors of determination. Come on up, worship team. He said this. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. After he shares all these doorways he had to walk through, he said, first, I had a prompting, and I walked through that door. I just feel compelled. I don't know why, but 
but I'm going to Jerusalem because the door has opened to me there. He walked through a door of opportunity. And then he was met with a door of uncertainty. And he goes, I have no idea what's going to happen when I get there. Except I do know this, there's going to be some doors of opposition. I'm going to be met with resistance. I'm going to be met with some hard times. I'm going to be met with some trials. He knew that. And then he says this, however, tell your neighbor, however. Go on, tell your neighbor, but say it like you mean it. Tell her, girl, I don't know what you're going through. However, you don't know what I'm going through. However, however. I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me. The task, the dream. I am not stopping until I reach the dream that God has planted on my heart. However many doorways I have to walk through, however many hallways I've got to walk down, However many times I get opposed, however many times I feel uncertain, if God has told me to do it, if he's placed it inside my heart, I will not stop. However, I will not stop until I've done the thing that God told me to do. And that's what Paul is saying in this moment. I just wonder, maybe we need to get some determination tonight, girls. Maybe you need to dream again. Maybe you quit too soon. Maybe you stopped just a little bit short. Maybe the door felt locked, but it wasn't. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, that thing, that prompting, that dream, that vision, that hope, that desire, maybe it just needs stirred up once again. Yeah, yeah. But now you know what you're looking for. You're not looking for the dream. What are you looking for? Doorways. You just need a few doorways. I don't, God, I just need a few doorways. That's all I need. And I will tackle this thing. I will see it through. I won't quit. I won't stop short. I'll keep pushing him open. I'll kick him open if I have to. I'll keep walking through. As long as I know, God, you're on the other side. As long as I know I'm still moving in the right direction. As long as I know that you're the doorkeeper, Lord. As long as I know the dream is from you. As long as I know as you, that you've told me to. As long as I know that you're with me. As long as I know that you're for me. As long as I know that you're holding me. As long as I know that you're covering me. God, I will kick them off. I'll open. I'll push them out of the way. I'll walk on through them. I'm determined. Maybe you should be determined because I promise you, you're going to get almost there. You're almost there. You just need one last door. You just need one more. There's only one more door between you and that dream. It's only one more door. You think there's 20. Nope, just one. Just one. Just one. Are you determined enough? Can you do it? Can you push it open? Can you keep trusting? Can you keep one, one more door? Just one more door. Just one more door. Just one more. I consider my life worth nothing until I kick open that last door and take hold of what God told me he wanted me to have. Stand to your feet. We're going to do something. Just a minute, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond. Another thing I feel prompted that God's told us to do. I've asked them to move the door right down front. I'll tell you why in a minute. But first, go ahead and close your eyes. I want to read this verse. John chapter 10, verse 9 says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved. You see, I realize that many of us in this room are knocking at the door about to walk through because God wants us to walk through. But some of you in this room, Jesus is on the other side of that door knocking himself, begging you to open it because you've never given your heart to Jesus. You've never committed your life to Christ. And Jesus is saying, I am the door. 
I'm knocking. And to every door I knock on, if you'll just open it and let me in, I'll rescue you. If you'll just open it and let me in, I'll save you. If you'll just open it and let me in, I will get you out of that situation you thought you could never get. Just open the door. I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Jesus says he's been knocking. And he's been knocking a long time, and I don't know why you're resisting him. But not tonight. Not here. Jesus would just say, if you open the door, I'll change everything. If that's you in the room right now, I want to pray for you. If you say, I want to give my life to Jesus, I'm opening the door to him tonight. Come on, all along the room, if you've never given your heart to Christ, just raise your hand towards heaven. I would do sisterhood just for you. I can't see all the hands, but I can see this one right back here. Look at me. You got your hand up. Look at me. I would do sisterhood just for you. For you to give that life. For you to open the door. For you to say yes. I would do it all over again. I would knock through doors of opposition. I would not know what the result would be, but I would do it just for you. And so did Jesus. So right where you are, pray this prayer. Tonight, Jesus, I choose you. I hear you knocking. And I open the door of my heart and invite you in. Take over my life, Jesus. I surrender all that I have and all that I am to you. Now help me, show me how to live, forgive me of my sin, and lead me by your spirit. I want to walk through every doorway that you're calling me to walk through. And I surrender now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, can you give a shout to God for that? So proud of you. I'm going to close with this verse, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. This is God speaking to us. Take it in. I know you well. You aren't strong. But you have tried to obey, and you've not denied my name. Therefore, I have opened a door to you that no one can shut. Here's what I know. Some of you have been resisting some doorways. I don't know which ones. Maybe you're just asking God for doorways of prompting. Maybe you're facing a door of uncertainty and you've been scared to walk through it. Maybe you've been facing doors of opposition and you're ready to kick the thing open. Maybe you just need a door of determination. Maybe you need a door of opportunity. I don't know what door it is that you're waiting on God to place before you or you've been too scared to walk through. But tonight, we're gonna go back into a time of worship right now. And here's what I wanna do. I can't explain it because I can only see it in the spirit. You understand sometimes we do things in response to God, not understanding naturally why, but trusting that in heaven, it makes sense. And so I've asked the guys to set the door down here. And what I want you to do, if you know God's stirring you, there is a doorway that you are either going to say, yes, I'll go through it, or God help me go through it, or I've not been going through it, but I'm going to do it tonight. Whatever you, if if God is knocking, open the door. And if that's you, here's what I want to do. As we're worshiping, you start on this side. So wherever you are in your seat, step out of your seat. If this is you while we're worshiping, come around this way. Just walk through the door. I want you to know they've anointed the door. We've prayed over the door. Something supernatural is going to happen when you take a step through that door. It's going to teach you how to watch for doorways. It's going to teach you how to get through doorways you thought you never could. Let God do what only he can do. Let the Holy Spirit breathe on you. But if that's you and you just want a piece of whatever God's handing out tonight, you just step out and you just make a line and just walk through the doorway and go back around to your seat. And as we worship, we're just going to go under the door. Come on, come on, come, come, come. Let's worship. Let's worship. Just start under the door. Walk under the door. Fuck. 